Welcome to Fair Game. I'm Christine Leahy, and my guest today is one of the most recognizable faces in Hollywood. He's the ultimate OG bad guy and has starred in everything from Machete to Spy Kids and Super Bowl ads. Actor Danny Trejo is here. It is so good to finally meet you. Thank you, thank you. Before you were an actor, you were a criminal, yeah. and you've spent time in every single California jail. Is that yeah. right? That was built at the time I was going to jail. San Quentin, Folsom, Soledad, Chino, Vacaville. Yeah. Which one was the toughest? Uh, San Quentin. Yeah. Jail, it's it really tough if you go to prison like your first time. If you grew up in the system, you know, California has a system that starts at juvenile hall, and if you grew up in that system, it's just another, you know, another school. You know, it's another university, and it's, it's, it's the only place in the world where you're either predator or prey, and uh, the decision is up to you what you want to be. You know, every day I'm going to be a predator or I'm going to be prey. You know, so. So you became the predator because you started boxing in yeah. jail. No, oh, no, God, I started boxing way before. My uncle Gilbert was in Golden Gloves when I was like nine and he was like 12 or 13, I remember, but but uh, I was his, they say sparring partner, but I was his punching bag. So I had to either learn how to fight or get my head beat in, you know, so I learned pretty good. So after jail, you wound up becoming a drug counselor. I'm still and, a drug counselor. Oh, you're still a drug I counselor. I still work for Western Pacific Med Corp and we detox heroin addicts. You're working as a drug counselor, though, and then you're brought onto a movie set yeah. to help consult because you're having a drug problem. Well, I, I knew a couple of people on this set, and, and one of the guys that I was working with was uh, was uh, an addict and, and was having some trouble. He was a young, young guy, and he called me up one night. I wasn't working that night. He says, hey, I'm having a big problem. There's a lot of drugs down here. And because in 85, Cocaine was rampant in the Hollywood doesn't like to admit it, but I can remember having seeing lines of coke on on production office, you know, oh, desk, wow. you know, and the stunt guys it was like it was rampant. And so I just went down to like hang out with him on this day. And I happened to uh, this guy asked me, hey, do you want to be in this movie? And I says, what do I got to do? He said, uh, do you want to be an extra? I said, extra what? He said, can you act like a convict? You're like, sure. I said, I'll give it a shot. You know? so, so I took off my shirt, and I have that big tattoo on my chest. That, that The tattoo says, oh, this guy was in prison. It doesn't say, I love America. I, I do love America. It doesn't say, mom. It just says, that's a prison tattoo, and everybody knows it. So what do you mean it's a prison tattoo? It uh, was... Uh, done with a needle and a thread. Oh, you like know, you got it done bang, in bang, prison? In prison, yeah. Oh, so. that sounds horrible. It was. <laughs> oh, that sounds like it would hurt. And very painful. He said, wait, well, leave your shirt off. And then this other guy comes across the set and says, hey, you're Danny Trejo. I go, yeah. He says, uh, I'm Eddie Bunker. I saw you win the lightweight and the welterweight title up in San Quentin. I go, I know you, and I was in prison with this guy. Wait, so this was the screenwriter, right? That yeah. recognized it, you oh, from jail? Yeah, we were in prison together. And he adapted the screenplay of Runaway Train. That was the name of the movie with Eric Roberts and John Voight. This is quite a reunion you guys had. Yeah, today. so we talked. Then he says, Danny, are you still boxing? I said, I'm training. I don't box. I don't get hit in the face no more. I'm 40 years old. So he said, we need somebody to train one of the actors how to box. And I said, what's it pay? And he said, 320 a day, because that was, I didn't know, but that was a SAG scale. Uh -huh. And they were going to give me 50 bucks for acting like a convict. So I said, 350 a day? I said, how bad do you want this guy beat up? I thought he wanted me to beat somebody up. Oh. I mean, 350, that's you more than I would make a week. You thought he was hiring you as like a hitman? Uh, yeah, oh, you know, geez. just kick somebody's ass. Oh, okay. I, got, I says, wow, how, how bad do you want this guy to be? No, no, you got to be careful. Danny, this actor's high strung. He might sock you. I says, for 320 bucks, give him a stick. Are you crazy? <laughs> I've been beat up for free. The, the director, Andre Kajalowski, saw me, and he just liked the way I looked. And so he hired me. Wait, so this is where Danny Trejo, the actor, That's what comes I, about. Uh -huh. But you say that you kind of learned how to act when you were in jail, because you had oh, to be well, tough. In jail, you know, if you're standing on a prison yard, and you know there's going to be a riot, and you've got a four-inch knife in your belt, and you're 
you have to act like you're not scared. But you eventually become an actor, and your first big movie was Heat with Robert De Niro and Al Pacino. Yeah, well, I did a movie called Desperado with Robert Rodriguez, and then I did a movie called Con Air. I've heard that uh, one. You know, mm -hmm. and that was like... <laughs> Small movie. And then when I did Machete, Robert De Niro came on the set. You know, he was a part of Machete. He played the senator. Uh -huh. And I remember bumping into him, and I went, wow. He was doing this for me, right? And he goes, you, hey, you, wow. number one. Because we joked about number one on the call sheet. You, number one on the wow. call sheet. Whoa. We what about George Clooney? Clooney? Because you did George From Dusk Till Dawn on that one. Yeah? George Clooney. What's he, what's he really like? He is one of the nicest people you're ever going to meet. I'm telling you that. And it's funny, because when we did Dust to Dawn, I didn't know who George Clooney was. I had never seen ER. And he walked on, everyone's, ooh, George Clooney, George Clooney. I'm looking at him, handsome guy, right? Looking at him, yeah, like, wow. Love and then he's like the biggest joker in the world, and he's, but he's, he's just a beautiful person. I love that you made this transition. You're kind of like the bad guy, right, in all the movies. And then you start doing Spy Kids. That was awesome. And the Muppets. That was Robert Was that Rodriguez. cool for you to be able to perform for a completely different audience? Well. Spy Kids actually made me a household name all over the world. I have heard, look, mommy, the man from Spy Kids in like 50 different languages. You know, I heard that in Cape Town, South Africa. You know what I mean? And uh, it's like uh, the Muppets most wanted. It was like, <laughs> that was the funniest thing in the world, you know? And I had a, a really tough experience when I was doing The Muppets because I was in England and my mom passed away. Mm. And my son had taken my mom uh, to breakfast for her, her birthday, which was just a couple of days before she passed away. So he called me and said, hey, I'm with mom, blah, blah. And so I, I got to talk. I talked to her for about 10 minutes and then hung up and then uh, she told me everything was all right. And then, and then while I was doing The Muppets in England, she passed away. And when my dad passed away, I just froze. I had nothing, no emotion, nothing. And my mom said, you better not do that when I pass away. I said, mom, I have to take care of things. Come on, let me you know, be this. Mm -hmm. I'll grieve later. And I just let it go, right? And when she passed away, I'm on the Muppets and I just froze again, just no emotion. People were coming up saying, God, we're so sorry. It's all right, I'm fine, leave me alone. And uh, please, you know, they just want to like grieve with us. No, hey, I'm fine. And then I know my mom in heaven said, no, you're not doing it. She sent that little green frog. And that little frog comes up and goes, I'm really sorry about you, boy. Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I ran to the <laughs> I ran to the bathroom, and, and uh, it was like I was crying and laughing at the same time because I knew, I know you did it. I know you did Aww. it. You know? But uh, it was just really, really kind of cool. Kinda I love planned. that story. <laughs> Kermit saved the day. Kermit saved the day. My mom said it. Yeah. I love that.